Breathe again. No, no, no. But uh, we'll talk about that offline and all that shit. But yeah, how you doing? How y'all doing this week, man? Uh, matter of fact, before uh, I even how y'all yeah. doing, let's go ahead and uh do this shit. Right. Let we do it. Intro. Welcome to the yeah. podcast with Face Pat and Tiz. <laughs> My brother said he, he feels like doing a quick little sea walk every time he hear the song. <laughs> Hey man, as long as somebody, ca- as long as he catching a vibe off this shit, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what it's about. That's what the fuck it's about, my brother. So tell him to keep on, keep on catching that vibe with us. I like it. Big respect, big respect. You got that vibe, vibe, vibe. We're well, in the meantime. Uh, What's up, guy? Welcome to the partners. Show with three friends separated by distance having hold on. Bear, 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 bear. Bear, bear. Uh, uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to the park. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your motherfucking boy, Tears. And I'm along with it's the other third of the partners. I'm rolling up, and I'm alone. <laughs> Face, damn it, I'm here. I forgot to say dramatic pause. Face, <laughs> damn it, he here, damn it, yeah. Face, damn it, he here, damn it, yeah. Face, damn it, he here, damn it, yeah. Hey, hey. hey. It's bond, uh, niggas. It's the bond. All right. Uh, but yeah, we up in this bitch. It is episode, what is this? One, six, something. 16, motherfucker. Yeah. That's my nephew's birthday, actually. Like, 116. Well, damn it. Salute to nephew. Mike. Salute to another cap. And uh Me and younger brother. Son. Yeah. And that's no cap. And uh we up in this bitch. Uh how y'all feeling this week, my guy? Tired as fuck. Uh-uh. Relieved. I got oh. relieved. Yeah, after we, what we discussed earlier about the part-time thing, I was like, yeah, this could work. This could work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let me know, bro. I got to uh, – I'll actually uh, talk to HR tomorrow and uh, get the referral information. And, uh, yeah, and we – yeah. You know, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk when we out tomorrow night, man. I ain't got shit else to do but talk to y'all, niggas. That's, that's literally the point of me going out. The, the club is just the ambiance. Just so it's stuff know. going around. But, yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah, man. And y'all, and I can introduce to my homeboy that I work with, and he can also tell you about it so you can get not just my perspective. You can get his perspective and decide if that's even what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. What's on? We got it. But yeah, the partners is going out tomorrow night, so y'all might see some more of this shit if you follow our Instagram. You might see some stories or some shit, you know, whatever that shit be going. I, I'm uh get Pat to help me really do the shit, do the shit. But y'all, y'all see, y'all will see, whatever. We about this bitch. Uh, anyway, as I'm talking about going out, um, uh, it kind of leads us into what I wanted to discuss this week with y'all, man. Um. There's this new internet phenomenon going on that's being debated between men and women, and it's and it's about these dudes. It's called passport bros, right? And basically, the premise of these dudes is they are dudes that are fed up with westernized women, and they are going overseas to get uh quote unquote traditional women, um from these third world countries like Thailand, etc., uh, Brazil, Colombia, whatever the case may be, right? All right. So now, having said that, first of all, have y'all heard of these niggas? Like, have y'all? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Learned. So now, with that being said, <laughs> are they right? Like, is there a premise right that like westernized women are corrupted to a point where like you can't deal with them and you just got to go overseas to get a woman that's worth anything or or is it just that they are kind of scared to step up to the women that are 
in Western society. Like, uh, they're actually intimidated or that they're having trouble getting women in this society. So they're... I think that's subjectional, and that also brings up the, the, the coin phrase strong enough to handle a woman or handle a certain type of woman. Um, I don't feel that no adult should be handled. Um, you handle bad situations. You handle problems. You don't yeah. handle women. Um, and women who have that mindset of you're not strong enough to handle me, um, I feel like you're going into the relationship or uh, the situationship with the wrong mindset. If you want somebody to handle you, you know you're a problem. So if you know you're a problem, if you know you're a handful, check yourself and be self-aware before you step into the situation expecting somebody else to do the job that you failed to do for yourself. Um, now, back to the passport bros, um, uh, I feel like it's, it, it, in this day and age, you have men who lack the um, capability to approach a female, and you also have females who lack the capability to know how to be approached. Um, so, yeah, in some instances, they're right. In some instances, I can say they're just being lazy and don't want to try. Um, a lot of women these days are not just accepting the the random Hey, you look good. You actually got to put some effort into it. And a lot of guys out here, I hate to say it, are effortless or don't want to put effort in for anything. They'd rather go the lazy way. Go ahead. No, I'm I'm qualifying as one of them niggas that you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just uh, put myself in that category. I shit wrong with it. But um, there are pros and cons. I see to both sides of the spectrum. Um, those who want to go out of the country and find someone who do, do, don't want to have a hassle with them, right? Who wants to have a, a always hassle, always argue, always bicker? No one wants that. No one wants to have the jostle for power in their household. Um, a lot of people want that old school relationship where the man did what he needed to do and the woman supported him. Um, these days you, you have it's a constant battle for power in a lot of households, um, especially with this new brand of woman coming up where the boss chick. Um, where a lot of these boss chicks are looking for men to do better than them, but you, what percentage of men are doing that? You have a percentage of men who are still old school and raised to be old school just to provide for their family. So they're not career oriented. They're providing oriented. So if me providing at this level provides for everything else, I don't need to be focused on my career, just my career. I need to be focused on doing this. Where in such certain situations, women can afford to just focus on their careers and just that. And that man who may want to approach her don't qualify her books where you go out of the country and majority the majority of the places what you make here in the United States is going to double or triple what the, most men in those countries are making most women in those countries are making so you're seen as a, a better commodity a higher commodity a higher quality um, piece I should say so you, you're seen with more aspira uh, admiration people want you more well over here you're seen more as the, the the small fish in the big pond because more people have it just as much as you have so it's more competition. It's more things you got to weed through. Um, they're dealing with women and just dealing with relationships over here may be more trying to you. And you don't have the time, per se, not time busy, but mental time to put into it. Um, going outside the country, you may be able to focus on more of yourself or still having that woman to support you and still give you those <coughs> basic needs you're looking for. But in the same instance, Feeling those basic needs, you don't have no one to help you find out or help you see what's beneath that surface level. Because in a certain certain relationships, men are only certain certain men are only searching for surface level things, not willing to dig deeper within themselves to see what they can bring out or what women can bring out. Um, that's why it also coins a phrase behind every strong man is a strong woman. Um, I don't believe Barack Obama would be what he is if he had a weak ass. Weak ass woman who just did whatever he wanted to do. You feel me? Like at some point, Michelle challenged him to be better. So it, it takes balance, I feel like. But that's a hard thing to find in our country in this day and age. It's trying to find that slim balance where you have someone to support you, but at the same time, push you and motivate you to be great. But also at the same time, not having that kind of battle for power in your household or in your relationship. So for my overall conclusion on, on the question, yeah. I feel like some of them right, some of them wrong, but at the end of the day, majority of them are just trying to be lazy. Okay. Yeah. Pet. I think today I will be controversial. 
Right on. Yeah, no niggas was right. Nigga. You you goddamn right. They right. Yeah, you motherfucking right. Yeah, hell yeah. If you want to find love <laughs> in another country and shit, you don't want to deal with nobody else's stress and drama and shit. You work all day. You want to come back and you don't want to deal with a whole bunch of bullshit or whatever. You work your ass off and then uh, and then at the end of the relationship, she's still tired of your ass even though you did everything right and all that other bullshit. And you feel like you can go goddamn go, get out of the country and relieve yourself of all. The unnecessary drama and bullshit that you would normally have with the modern woman of today, do that shit. I say do that shit. I don't have a fucking problem with it. Plus, I like going places. I like going places. <laughs> I will say I don't this. see nothing wrong with it. I say more power to them. Shit, if you can go somewhere outside of America, that is a, you know what I'm saying? That's... That's an achievement unto itself. You know, I think it's more of these guys actually, because if you're a passport, bro, that means you actually got the money to leave the country. So it's not a money thing. You get what I'm saying? Like, you got the money to leave the country or whatever and live a whole entire lifestyle way different than the states or whatever. I Like, I'm still going through shit moving from state to state let alone a whole nother country. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like man, you, you work you work your way up to a point in life where you can choose wherever you want to live and pick whoever you want to pick or whatever. I say feel free. Go ahead. More power to you. I don't got no goddamn problem because goddamn it, I don't want no motherfucking issues when my ass get rich and I marry whoever the fuck I marry, whatever lesbian couple that is. That's a Not a goddamn problem. I don't want no motherfucking problems. At all, yeah, and I also think that it's those same dudes. Like I said, they don't have no problem with money because they're passport bros or whatever. Um, they go out uh, taking these women out or whatever, and it might be it might be their problem. It might I would say then one issue it might be the choice of women that you pick or whatever. But sometimes I mean you can choose a woman and you don't know what you got until you get into it. Pretty much so. I, I I would just say that, and like I say, if they to get into it, they probably do all these things for women, you, you know, thinking they 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 the um uh the chivalrous gentlemen and everything, and they not getting appreciated for it. And at the end of the day, they start looking stupid, and they probably and the girl probably sticking them for free lunches and dinners and shit like that. Not even going to give them any time, and then mess around with whatever niggas she already messing with. So yeah, nigga, if you 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 found love across another country and shit, and it's not killing your pockets, my, my nigga, go ahead, passport, bro, it up, nigga. Hopefully, I'll see your ass somewhere outside of the country, my goddamn self, on vacation. Some, Man, some I, shit, I, I, bitches out there. I would say that I, I would say that I I lie somewhere between the two, I guess. Like all right, so. So hear me. All right. So on one hand, right, I agree that Western women do have a lot of issues that uh, would push a modern, uh, a push a man who is seeking traditional values away from a lot of the women that are here. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So I agree on that point. So I understand why they are going to seek these women out. But I also feel like when you look at the ratio of men to women right if you look at that ratio anywhere in the world we win it so you mean to tell me out of the say you live in Atlanta right but you a passport bro. that means what you basically saying is you got damn near uh, 15 to 1 well, 13 to 1 all the way up to an 18 to 1, depending on what part of Atlanta you in, ratio of women to men. And out of all them women, right, you could not find one that met your standard. That's either saying one of two things about you. Either the world around you is really fucked up and there's really no good women out here no more. Or Man, what the where the fuck are you looking? I, I'll say this. I come across a lot of people 
who are into traditional values and they're not from out of overseas. They're from right here. In the good old US away. You feel me? So I, I don't know that we necessarily got to go out of the country. Now, I will say this, though. In defense of these passport bro, the women that they're showing do seem to be very agreeable and very attractive, like aesthetically pleasing and seem to be like agreeable, which is two things that will get a man every time. Like if you want to know how to get a man, it's very simple. Appeal to carnal desires, visual, visceral. That means soothe his loins, make sure he's full, allow him to sleep, give him purpose so that he can work, and then like make sure that you are there to help him recuperate and re-energize and not a cause of like why he's also like stressing out on top of everything else. Because I'm going to tell you, as a black man, being a black man is hard out here in this world. I'm sure y'all would agree. Like, it, it like it. People say it all the time, but I don't think a lot of people understand unless you are a black man how like really difficult it is. Like you got to tread so many waters. Like you got to come out here. You got to make the white man happy. You got to make have the black woman happy. You got to make the other woman of other races not scared of you and happy. You got to make the damn boss at your job or the customers that you serve, you got to make them happy. And then on top of that, if you got kids, you got to make them happy. And wh all of this, while the specter of it any moment, any one of those people or the U.S. government killing you at any time, like it, it is a, a real threat that any one of those things or the U.S. government or your local government, if you want to call the police part of the local government, well, however you want to classify it, but it's very possible that you could die from one of those people. All while trying to make sure that you make them happy. I'm sorry. Like, being a black man is some rough shit. It's uh -huh. some, some, some toxic shit when you really look at it. Like, it's really... Nobody like, like, nobody's out here like, ooh, let me be a black man for a day. No, you don't want to do that. You might want to be a black woman because at least then you got pretty privilege. You got the ability to probably be more educated than the black man. Some of these men yeah. are trying to be black women. Probably have a better job <laughs> these days. That's why some of these men try to be a black woman. You're going to get more but assistance. People like going to see you as a threat. They're going to see you as a uh, just another person in the world trying to make it. They see a black man as, oh, he could destroy this shit. Let me make sure uh, he don't succeed. As the great Paul Mooney once said, everybody want to be a nigga till it's time to be a nigga. Boy, and if that ain't some of the realest shit ever smoked, like when you really look at, when you really break that quote down, like, we the most copy. Most of the cool shit has come from a black man. And I don't mean that to be disrespectful to any other subsection of people in the world. I mean that to be factually I correct. Yes. You did. I, I mean, like, the you could just check the track right. record. I don't got to sit there and waste my time going through it. Like, y'all look at it. But just know that we have done probably the most for human society. Mm -hmm. From language to math to science it's been black men kicking ass since the beginning so when you look at the world today it's shaped by black men so for us to have done so much for the world and to be this marginalized i can understand why you have this group of passport bros it's like you know what fuck this shit i'm going over here and give me a thailand woman but uh -huh. i also still again go back to as a black man in the world, it's possible very much so to find you a woman that's down with traditional values in this country without having to go outside of the country and waste the extra money. And you can still go outside the country just to enjoy yourself, but you don't have to go there with the intent of trying to find a woman. You can go there just and chill because there are women here that uh, 
will ride with you if you uh express things in the correct way. And you just honest. You know what I mean? I think that 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 plays into it too. And that's something that uh I don't know that they got nothing to do with it, anything or that we got time to really dig into it deeply, but it might be a topic for another day. But like how much honesty plays into like how shit goes in a relationship. Like you can really sometimes just be real honest with a woman. And even though she may not like what you're telling her that you want, she might fuck with it just off the fact that she respect the fact that you ain't putting her through no bullshit and she ain't got to waste her time like being embarrassed or having no scandal. She can just know what's up front and just deal with it. A lot of times what really happened and fuck up shit is that people lie and then it, it become a betrayal feeling. And then you have <coughs> women mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They'll get over it over time, but um, all that stuff. yeah, go ahead and get them trips. You know, Frontier got hey, a, uh, Frontier got a deal that is like is I think it's three ninety nine or four ninety nine for a whole year. You can get flights for a whole fucking year, nigga. Hey, look, this is what I'm gonna tell you. Too. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the Frontier, but we need to go on the Wild Frontier, and we need to have a buddies like like niggas need to go on like a cruise. Just the bros, like everybody that's in the group chat, like just pull up, hop on a on a ship and just go. The Royal Caribbean got great ships. I'm just saying. I'm just that's saying. Yeah, it's, like a, it's, it's some nice introductory shit, and it, it kind of suit all people if they ain't got a pass, but they can stay on the boat and still be getting some vibes. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But you know, like I, I don't know. It's that's just off the top of my head. And I think that's something that we could do like within the next year. I think it's something that's feasible for everybody to afford. And it ain't like, okay, it's like out of the country, but it ain't out of the country. And it gives niggas a chance to actually do the shit that we keep talking about, but we don't never do every year. It's like have that niggas trip. But mm-hmm. then, but shit, uh, but like, I, I feel like a cruise or something like, like, like a weekend jump. It ain't even got to be like a whole week. It'd be like a three day jump. Niggas pull know, up man. and. Port on on a Thursday evening, pull out and then that, uh, that Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, and then we get on a flight and go back home or drive back home at that point. We're from wherever we at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That ain't got to do with nothing, but you know, why are we talking? I think idea. I like cruises. Okay. Yeah, man, don't hate on the man. Don't hate on the man. I, I think it's some, some real nigga shit. Me, me and my brother channeled uh, me and you at the uh, at the club when remember niggas in Paris was out when they first came out. <laughs> and no matter where we were in the club, if it came and on, we just started on his hair every time. It just like, <laughs> jumping and then it start and then we just hype the club up. The crowd, all you just saw were two niggas just. Bloop, bloop. Ah! And then everybody, everybody just start jumping with us. And shit, that shit was cool. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, man. This club tomorrow, right? It's it's a uh, some young folks. What's, Sometimes what's the name you have like a crowd that's like thirty sums, but it's just like it, it's underground. It's in a like an underground cave. I feel like I've been there before. You probably have. It, it's it's yeah. I'm gonna ask you the name after that. That you probably done been there. Like when you see it, you're gonna be like, Oh, all right. You might not have even been there, but you've been there. If that makes I think sense. I think I was there and it was like a raver night or some shit. Boy, it'd be some wild <laughs> shit going on. Sometimes it'd be a night where a nigga just be in there with like glow sticks doing like pop locking and I shit. Probably having battles, and then sometimes it'd be just like a whole gangster vibe, and then I never know what I'm gonna get, but every time I've been, <laughs> I've like enjoyed the the, the ambiance of like whatever was going on around me. It was fun. Except for one time when I got kicked out. But <laughs> now imagine that wasn't my fault. So you snicker nigga. That shit won't my fault. <laughs> I'm real bogus shit. The nigga uh I'm dancing with I'm dancing with my woman now, mind you, right? Dancing with my woman. We came to go. And I'm freaking the shit out of her. 
And for some reason, this nigga taps me and is like, hey, man, you can't do that. And I was like, huh? Now, I'm confused as fuck because I'm not really sure what he's talking about. He's like, yeah, you can't do that. And he started to get more aggressive in his tone. Now, at this point, I ain't gonna lie. I was about three, about about, about ten sheets to the wind. It, it was it was a lot going on. <laughs> but, but I was like, okay, uh, what you mean I can't do that? He was like, yeah, you can't be dancing with her like that. I was like, nigga, this is my wife. Fuck you, me. So at this point, that is strange. I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why this nigga started like yelling. Now, I don't know what he was yelling because at this point, y'all know what I see. Blacked out, yeah. So something in my hands decided to go up under his armpits and lift him. (laughs) 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 Hold on, Pat. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. Y'all know I'm not a big guy. But this guy was at least six feet. He was, he, you know, he was a legit small person in the realm of men. But something just told me, go up on this armpit and you're going to lift him. And I, and it worked. And I, as I proceeded to lift him, it felt like I was about to last ride this nigga. And as I went to get into the momentum of like casting this motherfucker aside like a, a pair of dice, I felt myself going up. So as I'm lifting this nigga, security, my body is lifted as well. So everything is lifted. It feel like, all right, so say you got a pallet jack, right? And you uh-huh. lift the but then the forklift come lift both y'all. It's like when the tow truck get uh get towed. <laughs> when I talk about this shit would have been the meanest double team move on a wrestling game. Like, oh shit. So I continue with the motion. So I cast this nigga aside, but it's off of the I added momentum of this nigga picking me up. So as I cast him aside, my arms are out here and my arms stayed out here as I was escorted out of the club. Yeah. Yeah. All the best club stuff. All from dancing with my woman. I, the woman I brought to the club. I'm I'm dancing with my woman, and I got kicked out of the club for dancing with my woman. So I want y'all to know it wasn't my fault. But you know, I I get, get, I'm gonna tell you. I got kicked out. I have. I've been kicked out on my own dancing with a woman right at the club that I was promoting. No, I'm gonna tell you one a true story. Every club. <laughs> That I've been kicked out. It wasn't of. my woman, but it was a woman. I've always started with me dancing, whether it be dancing with a girl and it being the wrong girl, or me battling and a nigga getting mad, or me just dancing and at some point in that dancing somebody gets bumped or moved or pushed in the wrong way. So like. Every fight I've been in at a club is all or, or like when I get kicked out of a club or security throw me out of a club, it always starts with like me dancing with somebody or dancing in some way. And then yeah. next thing you know, huh, you right. know you need to try okay. to a two step. Y'all pull around, catch me outside. I I'll catch y'all when y'all done. Y'all know where I'm gonna be at. Somebody call me where y'all leave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I tell you what, yeah, I ain't gonna say nothing though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, uh, so we go from clubs and uh, the passport bros to the club. You know, usually at the club, it's like a a, a hip hop night, and you know, with hip hop, there's rappers, and uh, we're gonna segue into faces topic. Yeah, I'm right with these old ass niggas, these young ass niggas. My topic is this all the old rappers, excuse me, and the old generation hating on these new rappers and the new generation, or are they just failing to change with the times? Bring this up because I was listening to a YouTube on YouTube early. You know, I just go to YouTube listen to random shorts most of the day. So a short came up with um Nori when he was on the um uh Joe Budden show. 
I don't know how recent or how old it is, but he was talking about um the young rapper saying that the old niggas was mad. And one of his excuses or one of his statements was like, well, nigga, I've been platinum longer than before, way before you were. Well, you would have to be because you're older than them. It'll be sad to be an old rapper who's been out since before these people were born and just now go platinum when they go platinum. So that's not a real kudos to you because you're supposed to do that. Um, he went on to say and uh, get real braggadocious about the material things. I got I got them watches you got. I got 10 of those. Them cars you got, I got three of those. You're supposed to have that. If you've been in the game as long as you have and, and, and got to the prize that you have, if you fell off, that would be a detriment to you. You're supposed to have these things you're having. Um, I see the old generation as doing both, not embracing the new generation of the change and hating. Um, Timberland had a very good thing, very good statement about this same topic. He basically said the young generation ain't doing it but working smarter instead of harder. A lot of stuff that the older rappers had to do physically and had to get physical grind on, a lot of a lot of that physical stuff been cut out by technology. So, what do you mean? To the crates and shit. Hmm. What do you mean, like carrying crates and shit? As far as the beats, as far as anything dealing with technology, as far as anything dealing with person to person, getting people in to try to do a beat, getting people into the studio. Well, right nowadays, I can email you some shit and ain't got to worry about it. Real. You feel me? Like. Motherfuckers used to have to come to the studios or make make time to come to the fucking studio. Nah, shit, I can email you this track. Get to me. Remember, so a lot of people are hating, and even when it comes to the streams and streams giving you revenue, where people had to go out and actually buy the physical copy back in the day. Yeah, I understand. I understand that older rappers had it harder, but with anything in time, the beginning of anything is going to be harder than the the next two gen two gen two to the generations. If it was the same, if it was the exact same now it was then, there'd be no full motion, and it'd be a sad ass sight if we got people in 2023 doing the exact same business practicing and rapping the same as people in 1994. But do you think that is all right? So I feel you. I I, I definitely feel you coming from. Um, I do think that there is a sect of older rappers that are very much so bitter. Or seem to have beef with the younger generation a lot more than others. Um, but I wonder, does it come from also like the lack of respect that the younger generation has? Like, all right, so like when we was growing up, right, in general, whatever you did, you respected the OGs of that field. So if you was coming up and you was a plumber, you respected the plumbers. If you was coming up and you was a a hip hop head, you respected them ones that came before you. Like, even if you knew that your skill was lyrically better or your songs were better or whatever, you you still respected those people that came before you. I feel like it's a lack of respect from the younger generation for older generation shit. Like, it's like a dismissal as opposed to like, yeah, we doing our thing, but you know, they did their thing too. You know, they said they paid away. Like, as opposed to that outlook, it's more of a, man, fuck that shit. Well, see, on that, I feel like it's a whole societal thing because I feel like all young generations right now doing the same thing out just outside of hip hop altogether. They just that's young generations is doing just that all together to the older generation. So, but that's what I'm saying. When you get that dynamic, you now got hip hop having that dynamic, which leads to older generations feeling more and more dismissed. And the more like hip hop is a sport of men, right? But when you look at any situation in life involving a man the worst thing you can do to a man is dismiss him and take away his purpose once a man feels like you're doing that they gonna lash the fuck back out and, and that's kind of what you're seeing is young niggas like man fuck what y'all did that shit whack we don't give a fuck we on our shit as opposed to hey you know Oh shit, got it, got is the shit, but you know, respect to what y'all did. So because of that, you see this dynamic of like, I wonder, is it is it the chicken coming first or the egg coming first? You feel me? Like, I wonder, is it like, is it the old niggas mad or is it the young niggas disrespecting the old niggas, which makes the old niggas mad, which makes the young niggas disrespect the old niggas more? And it's a conundrum. I don't know. 
but it's a bunch of them the same fucking thing. I say I I believe it, that could be more than be subjectional too, because in some situations where you have some old could have some old niggas trying to reach out to some young niggas to try to give some advice or hop on records and help them out and being getting this like I don't need your ass. What the fuck? But then again, you could have some situations where motherfuckers who just don't like these young niggas. Like what the fuck is y'all young niggas doing? I can't stand this shit. So it could be subjectional with each it, the, the different the different rappers. You feel me? So. Uh, Pat, our uh, resident hip hop head, what say you? I think it's a communication barrier. Majority of it is a communication barrier because it, if it, it's <clears throat> how to say, like even with the humor of the younger generation, it's some things in that that us in our generation and older generations is going to be like, nah, nah, we we can't let that pass. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So crazy. It's hmm? yeah, they talk to we each just, other crazy. I would be shit down somebody's leg. They talk to me like that. Yeah, it'd be like it'd be. I mean, it's it's a mix of like sarcasm and just sly trolling and disrespect or whatever. And you also got to think this is a generation where they haven't been outside and they haven't talked shit and got punched in the face. Fuck like around majority, this gonna slide it, me, I stab you in your chin. My majority of them don't get punched in the face until they like eighteen and going out the clubs. Well, older than eighteen and going out the clubs, and then they right. realize, oh, I can't do the same shit that I did <clears throat> on the computer that I do now. So it's that is one of those things, and then it's like, then at the same time, yo. It's it's just the simple fact that when the media likes it when rappers are in conflict with each other. You know what they it is, dude? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I apologize. They don't, they, they don't like it when they con congratulate each other. Like I see mm -hmm. I see older rappers all the time. Like I've seen Jada Kiss all the time bigging up newer rappers all the time. Like in, mm -hmm. in general. And then it's gotten to the point that I feel like it's a sly agenda and pro like sly agenda for the older niggas to be like, all right, we're gonna just start giving them their props or whatever so we can like calm the tension between us and then we can, you know what I'm saying, actually work together or whatever. But I really feel like if I really feel like it's more like the more disrespectful I am, the more confrontational I am, the more I look appealing uh, uh, or whatever. And that gets in a, a lot, a lot um, a, in a way, a lot of times with the communication between the first generation, like, I don't want to say the first generation, but the older generation and the newer generation, basically. Okay. I, I, I can see that. I also wonder, uh, going along with your, like, it's an agenda type of thing. I wonder, is it kind of something like the uh, LeBron versus Jordan debate where, like, people of a certain generation, because that's what they grew up with, mm -hmm. they're close to that content, so it makes them uh, more protective of it. Like, the shit that you come of age to is kind of the <laughs> shit that, like, like, to this day, a lot of songs that's on my playlist like, I still got a lot of the new shit, too. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of the shit that I go back to finding myself just listening to is shit that, like, came out when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Like, though, those four years are kind of still the music that are the soundtrack to my life to this day. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like I wonder, is it that type of thing, but just in music where, like, because, you know, like in, in the Jordan LeBron, I, I feel like it's not so much that one is better than the other. They might be equal. I think it's just kind of like whoever you grew up seeing and being a part of that journey, that's who you're going to resonate more with because that's that's a part of your journey almost. You know what I mean? Like you are you are some of your parts. And I, will, I, I got something yeah. to add to that. I would say oh. I definitely agree with that. That's definitely part of it. I think that's like the root one of the root factors of it too because I, it's a generation out there that treat drake like you would treat jay-z 
there's a yeah. generation before yeah. that yeah. that yeah. Wayne like you would treat Jay Z. You know what I'm Correct. saying? And the generation before you would treat Rakim like you treat Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's definitely part of. That's like the main root factor of it, or whatever. But it's like with everything that's black, it gets blown up in the media because media the equates black with controversy. Well, damn. And, okay. And so, like, Same just, way. just, just like, just like, even with that conversation we had on Sunday or whatever. Like, well, I would, the reason why I'm against, you know, Jason being on, like, if he was on any other black, like, platform, I know in his situation, he had said so many bullshit that no other platform, except maybe that uh, Rollins Martin probably would get him on there to debate him. You get what I'm saying? But it's just the simple fact that I don't like black issues on white platforms because who are you to have an opinion about it in in general because you love the fact that we have issues not all white people i'm just saying those platforms that jason whitlock and others have been on or whatever so like so to play that do you think that it's okay for black people to have an opinion on white issues what are white issues? Uh, See, that's that's, hmm. that's my thing. Like the Good media, question. Good question. The, Touché, the, media, the media, the media floods like our, white issues would be I like homesteading so issues. What 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 the fuck are white issues? Homesteading issues. And what do you mean? What are white issues that's not going to end up being racist? Like um. If y'all remember a couple years ago when they had that the um the government had that big ass shootout with that white family over there um I forgot what state they was in and it was all the the big homestead oh, Oregon. Homestead. Oregon. yeah yeah motherfuckers like out there you would hear more of the like because more out there it's just centralized basically on them it ain't a bit a lot of uh how can I say us. So <laughs> you have more white problems out there, like homesteading, them trying to get their taxes and shit, the way they doing they on their land and shit like that. Because out there, it ain't, it ain't all, um, I ain't going to say civilized, but it ain't as much, it, it's more um, rural. So when you have more rural areas, you have more of the personalized problems where our problems are more polarized because most of us who face these media rise prob uh, problems who are highlighted media, we're in centralized um city areas where those of us who are in the rural areas of the issues we face there are more like hand in hand with so-called what i would consider white problems because people out in the country like the black folks we got the same homesteading problems as the the white folks out here where if you're trying to get cattle or you're trying to get um animals on your land y'all gonna face the same type of problems you may have more of a problem because of what's again race coming to it but they gonna have the same type of problems you just may have not have the same extremes as the problem, but we they gonna face the same type of issues. Where over on that coast or just in that that section, I would say those are more their problems because they they try to infringe on their rights as far as what they can have on their land, um, the firearms they can have because you on your own out there, you <coughs> mean, but you still in the government, so they still want to have some watchful eye of what you do. Um, if I ever heard of the um Ruby Ridge, the um case of Ruby Ridge. Uh -huh. uh, it was a guy, he just wanted to be off the grid, so he moved into, he got some land, moved off, and had his, his family off the grid. FBI wanted to monitor what was going on because they had a guy a word that he had guns and shit out there, but my, I have my right to have guns out here. They came on his property undercover with no, 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 him and his family not knowing. His son and the dog was out walking on the property, saw these niggas undercover in suits, like some disguise suits on his property. The son killed him. Rightfully so, but the, but the agents turned around and killed the son. So that started a big ass shit right there. They killed the son, killed his wife. End up, um, he and the uh, the dude who they went at, he used to be a Vietnam vet or some shit like that. He was a war vet, so you know he was he was he was trained and ready to go. They end up having to get one of his old lieutenants to come get him to give up and surrender. But shit like that's the problem they face over on there. But we don't hear about them problems because once again, our problems are more polarized because we in more city wise shit. 
And I got a, I got a rebuttal for you though. I got a rebuttal for you. Hit him with it. Okay. It's is that a white problem or is that a random issue? For because I, I like our problems are like we get daily coverage on our problems. You get know what I'm saying? And then I can mm-hmm. imagine. I can imagine you put a black person in that same situation. It'll be a worse situation. Like I can imagine a black person in that situation. So like it doesn't seem like it's a issue that's just I would well me personally in America, I can't see a black person in that issue because I don't know many black people who going out just to buy land and get off the grid. You feel me? So in essence of seeing that and our culture and our nature, we ain't known of. I just want to be away from everybody and get off the grid and just go in the woods and live. I see that as them. That's that other culture who just wants to be away from in the woods. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of nature. And somebody okay. trying to take that away from you and then it becomes something else. Us, we trying to fight for rights. We trying to get to the point where I got the right to go off and fucking be in the woods. We ain't got there yet. So you can't see that as a white privilege problem. Good shit. I got the right to go off and be by myself, but now you're telling me I can't. Well, I well, I would say my response to that is that if the media covered more of those problems, it would probably be a lot less racism because people. But that's the thing. But that's the thing. That's the that's the key thing. That won't sell. Media loves racism because as long as it's racism, there would need to be a need for media. There need to be a heightened need for media. It's, Uh, It's a lot of white. It's a lot of white folks that get killed by the cops too. But we're not they're not going to put that on the news because you don't get as much uproar from that. You're not going to get your 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 ratings aren't going to be there. You're not going to get all communities in an uproar. Oh, a white man died. Oh, oh, a white cop kills a black man. Oh, my God, it's racist. And before you can even know the facts is is up in a roll because it's them two different races. All right. Even, so this, even this, when we just did the black, even when we just did the black people killed the black, the black boy, some way, somehow. I heard race come up in that shit. Uh-huh. But my first my first thing was, oh, I just seen uh, somebody get killed. Okay. But in conversations I'm hearing, oh, that's it's because of racism. My, my mindset won't know it on racism because I'm like, okay, it's just a cop killed another or killed somebody else. I'm not seeing it as black and white. I'm seeing it as motherfuckers need to train these motherfucking cops more. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So I, I want to uh, kind of, I guess, bridge the gap between y'all two. I don't even know. But this is where I kind of see it. Uh, when you come to the situation of the cops and all of that, you're looking at a few different areas. All right, so one, yes, the blacks were responsible, so it's not necessarily a race thing on the surface, right? I, I feel you there. On the surface, it's just cops doing some bullshit again to some people. So it's really a cop issue, right? But I think where people are coming from on the race issue, or at least the people that I've seen that sound like they got some sense that are coming at the, from a race issue, I think they're coming from it being like a systematic thing. So like white people created this system where it's okay to disrespect blacks. So that's why the black dudes jumped on this black man as opposed to the fact that like the reason... You don't hear about a lot of the white dudes that are killed by the cop. It's because I would now I don't 100 percent know this, but I feel like I've heard this somewhere. And, you know, people can fact check me. Let me know in the comments. You know, y'all can let me know next week on the pod or, you know, whatever. We could do a correction if I'm wrong. But I would venture to say that the amount of unarmed killings by the police would probably be skewed more toward blacks and Hispanics. Um, yeah. Now. As far as killings in general, I would say, yeah, probably whites are probably leading that pack because they are also the num- the dominant race. They're the majority still. In- so, uh, but I-, I would say if people are coming at it from the race angle, I, was- I would think that the ones that I've heard that make sense are coming at it from the fact that like whites create this system where it's okay to beat on black people, but you wouldn't see the same exact behavior toward a white unarmed person with such savagery like the fact that we are even like when you hear black on black crime right all right obviously people do shit to people in proximity right but this the viciousness with which we dispatch each other 
that comes from a place of white supremacy taking hold years ago and, and putting us against us. Like, if you look at society today, it's the Willie Lynch letter come to fruition. Like, that's literally what you're seeing play out in our community. You're seeing the colorism. You're seeing the women against the men. You're seeing the men against the men. You're seeing the power struggle for an imaginary power that's not even actually there for us. Like, you're seeing all of these things play out in our daily lives today in, in black society. And I think that's kind of what people are going to, like, the way them dudes jumped on old boy with such vicious intent. Mm -hmm. Not something that you would normally see black people do to white people. Like, even if you look at the hood, right? Like, say you look at the hood, quote unquote, the ghetto, the, the you know, the blackest of the black neighborhood in America, right? You're going to see black men gunned down and in that same neighborhood you will see a white couple running through the neighborhood chilling safe as fuck because people scared as fuck to touch them white folk but we'll fuck ourselves up so I think that's where they coming from with the race angle I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's all about race I think that it's a lot to do with the system with which police are allowed to operate with impunity in general but there is a race angle to be discussed in it. The same way, like, I don't necessarily apply the race angle to this, but I can see the angle that comes off of it where people may want to talk about it. Uh, same way with, with the single parent shit. Like, I don't apply that to that situation, but I can see people want to have a conversation about it based off of the conversations that it naturally brings up, which is about race politics systematic oppression white supremacy uh black on black politics um a whole bunch of different layers you know what i'm saying so i think y'all both kind of got the angles right i think it's just this is such a like i think what's happening what's happened is to society is like you we've gotten to a place where like every situation has multiple angles to it because society is so multi-layered now like because of uh monoculture kind of being dismantled so like y'all know how uh before the internet people kind of all the reason society was successful is because society would all kind of get behind these beliefs and say they're like all right this is bad killing people is really fucked up let's not do that let's mm -hmm. look at people that as a bad pe person let's not give them credence Let's not joke about that. Like, let's look at that as fucked up. So you had people who were demonized because they were doing fucked up shit, which is well, they should be by society. Well, now you got a class of people who have been socialized to not to all have different inputs of why they believe something. So now you have people who are Christians, Muslims, atheists. And within that, you have people who are influenced mostly by YouTube or influenced mostly by the church or influenced mostly by the how like it's no like singular areas of like society is getting their cues from these three places it's now like these 3,000 places which leads to people not really having anything they follow so you got it's always these multiple layers because everything is crossing you got this group over here that's like well look because of this, I see myself in this situation in this way. And then you got the people over here that's like, well, I see myself in this situation in this way. So you got all of these different layers that you kind of got to deal with because we don't deal with none of the shit. All that shit is there. It all makes sense. From faces issue of like these cops need more rest and the stress levels that they're under and the lack of training and the, like the, the systematic issues that lead to them being more trigger happy in general. To the racial aspect of like the white supremacy aspect of like this is exactly what they want is to pit us against us to the aspect of does society fail because of certain other things that then trickle into 
that sets this up to be a thing that can happen. Like it's a whole bunch of different little places we can go with it, but I, I think y'all are both right at the end of the day. Yeah, man. And to dab, dab into conspiracy theories, the media don't oh, want white people to look like they um have problems in the first place. So they always put Indeed. up black problems. Indeed. Well, I, hey, that's a, a, a good... Yeah. Just to add on to that, I don't know if anybody knew, but when you come into this country, if you're not black or of African descent, you're automatically white. So... When we're having these, when people have these discussions, when we're talking about ratios and number of people in the country, and you're going by a census, realize everyone that's counted as white is not really white. And that's where we get into the conversation about Latinas being black or not, because a lot of them, they, especially the more fair skinned ones, they like to roll with the Caucasians when it suits them and then jump on the black bandwagon when they need our help in their cause to get some oh no oh no i ain't even talking about just Uh what you personally think i'm talking about government paperwork the government makes you do that if you don't come from an african country or you have not of african descent when you come into this country you are branded as caucasian you are white on your paperwork so when we're doing these census paperwork and we're and we're saying the numbers are greater it's not because we have more caucasian in this country we have a lot more people who are categorized as caucasian and not black you can yeah, be egyptian you can be from morocco you can be and your ass gonna be white on that paperwork yeah, I was, I was more saying that because of that, you lead to the situation of Latinas being oh, okay, Latinos having an issue or Latinx people having an issue in this country because a lot of them, especially the fair skinned ones who don't either self identify as a certain thing or because they don't come from a country that's known to have like the African descent, they come into this country classified as white, so they benefit from those classifications and situations yeah. and they want to jump on our bandwagon when it suits their cause mm-hmm. country. everybody so like, want to be a nigga when it, until it's time to be a nigga <laughs> indeed oh. going back to that original premise of like it's cool to be with us until it's time to take the backlash or the the fucked up shit that come with being us like it's not it's easy cool to be with us until it's time to fight yeah, and you want to run, and that's the shit that I don't like. Like it's, it's like them, it's like these kids nowadays that that jump in game, and then as soon as the shit get hot, they just they they disown it. I don't want to do this. No, nigga, you was down, you was down, down, the down, down, down. down. Were well, you down today? Get your ass down. No, don't get out, don't get out, Trey. Ain't no getting out. Ride with no boy. It's all that same mentality. Like I, I want to be cool with the shit until the shit hit the fan, and now I'm scared. Now it ain't cool no more because now it's some real shit I gotta actually stand up and take responsibility for. People don't want to take responsibility. People want the benefits of everything without the responsibility that it takes to actually initiate it. Like it's just like I watch these my job equity instead of equality. They want, like the you want the paycheck. They sign up, apply. They want the paycheck. They love the fact that they get benefits. They can they can get paid every week. And then when it comes time to work, oh, let me go hide in the bathroom. Oh, let me go steal this time. But but you apply for this. You wanted to work. So why aren't you working? Oh, because you want the benefits, but you don't want the actual shit that it takes to get it. You don't want the shit that come with it. You just want the shit to make you look good. I know this new dance. I'm cool with this black person. But then when it's time to be black, oh, uh, no, I'm black and glad. But yeah. I'm complete. I'm about 85%. That's a 5% of joke somewhere in there. Somewhere in there, but I ain't gonna do it because <laughs> I can't figure out where the joke at. All right, true. Do it. All right, go do it. Mm-hmm. All right. Episode one sixteen. Is it that time? <clears throat> <laughs>
Good and fuck around. <laughs> Um, you know what? I'm gonna segue into this first topic. I'm gonna skip around and segue into it because we were talking about we were talking about, you know, you said one time as an example in our last topic, people comparing LeBron to Jordan. I did. And, I but, did. But but currently LeBron had another comparison. Um when he ended up beating Kareem Abdul Jabbar's all time scoring record. I like to give it up for another fellow Capricorn who also has the same birthday as me. He's exactly oh, one Capricorn year. He's ahead all year round, baby. Exactly billions of dollars more in that you understand me? But yeah, <clears throat> I have more hair. Now, what I will say that to me, to me, Mm-hmm. Having lived through both, right, and having been influenced by both, I think this makes LeBron the best basketball player of all time. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that you can't feel what you feel, but people that feel the joy is the best, I got you. I understand. But I do feel like LeBron has chosen paths to the finals that are, like, to his championships that are a little more difficult. And I also feel like he has done more in general. Like, I feel like it's one of those conversations like, all right, I look at him like the Muhammad Ali of basketball as opposed to the uh, Sugar Ray Robinson or the Rocky Marciano. Dudes who have way better records and who have, like, probably more technically sound and who have more of those like regular shits but like they did like this nigga transcends the game like this nigga has no spots on his record he has a great marriage there's no oh lebron got a side baby rumors out there this nigga is a pass first player who can drive on anybody still to this day it's still the best I can get to the basket whenever I feel like it type nigga. He is a pass first dude who just broke the scoring record who a lot of people didn't feel like was going to be broken. Um, And the person that held the record was a person that was played most of his career within 15 feet of the bucket. This nigga LeBron has had to shoot threes. He's had to drive, like he's had to do a lot more to get there. So I, 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 I can't Niggas need to get this nigga his flowers and stop fucking them over. Like I, I'm, I'm all down with old school, and I actually feel like Jordan has his place. And if you want to say Jordan is better, okay, go with it. But for my money, LeBron the best shit I've seen. Like if I had to, yeah, I ain't seen shit like that. The longevity, the durability, like just the ability to stay that durable that long. And to be, I don't know anybody else in that year that he's in who's having a year like he's having. Like, to be in your 20-something years still averaging 30. What the fuck is wrong with you? Machine. Like, oh, why are you doing this? Because you can't. Like, this thing has been great at basketball and the main man in basketball for literally two years less than we've been friends, Pat. And he's one year younger than me. Exactly. The shit is crazy. So, uh, um, millions and billions LeBron. of dollars more in that work. Yeah. Salute to LeBron. Man. I do. I, I do have more hair than him. So that's one thing. But yeah, that's one thing we can say. Like, our hairlines are, like, I would say this my hairline is getting there, but. It's still, 
it ain't back here yet. I ain't got the LeBron just yet. I still got a few more years before yeah. I get to the Steve and LeBron level. But that I'm, I'm, I'm double him because I got two. If, him, I, if I, I lock ever get back to that level, I'm saving my shit, nigga. I'm going bald as fuck. I'm going Jordan route. I believe I can. I'm stretching out dunking on it, oh boy. I'm going bald as fuck. And I've done that so, look before, so I actually know I can pull it off. So, Not always. Uh, since, we, I want. since we on the topic of giving flowers or whatever, I thought I should go from uh, breaking records to uh, awards, pretty much. Um, at the Grammys, that debacle, uh, that circus. Uh -huh. Grab Capricorn and a person we don't really listen to. <laughs> yeah, LL Cool J came up and presented the first inaugural Dr. Dre Global Impact Award at the 2023 Grammys. Okay, and uh, so guess. guess who got the first award? Huh? I said salute to Dre, I guess. Yeah, that is su salute Lil to Wayne. Dre again, because he got... <laughs> it won't look Wayne. It wasn't? I'll give you another guess. Snoop Dogg? Nope. You close. You're getting really close. Oh, man, let me smoke this chronic. Kendrick? <laughs> From Cali. Huh? Dr. Dre? Yes, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Yeah, get the fuck out. How you win the award that's named after you? <laughs> Boy, that's some nigga he shit the there. the first eh? recipient of the inaugural Dr. Dre Global Impact Award. I like to thank myself <laughs> and me. And so what uh, was the award that uh, Drake was doing the the uh the little speech for Lil Wayne about. Um, let me look it up. Cause I he uh, I think he actually didn't even intend to actually win anything. He didn't. I think he took out his um. I guess he took out his nomination or whatever you would say to. So he don't even have anything to do with the Grammys. But let's see, Drake Grammy. No, Drake Lil Wayne speech. Huh? No, Drake Lil Wayne speech is what you want to look up. Well, no, you said um I had, said uh, I said speech. he okay. just did a speech. Drake did a speech for Lil Wayne that in which I could have swore he was talking about a global impact. So I don't know if it was for like American Music Awards or for another award show, but he did a speech for Lil Wayne. Or maybe it was old. Maybe I'm... Uh, he did a but speech. That nigga did a speech about Lil Wayne. And oh, Wayne. he did that at a, a recording academy Black Music Collective event. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never yeah. mind, then. Carry on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He, but bad. the thing was, he was to present the Global Impact Award to Ed Sharon. Drake paused for a few moments as someone stepped into the frame and whispered a correction in his ear. Lil Wayne. Yeah. Yes, oh. that one. That one. He, he said, Lil Wayne, oh, makes more sense. He continued drawing more, some laughs. And that, that's why I'm reading off of this thing. But yes, yeah, that is that exact thing. Yep, that's the one I saw. That was probably some okay, I probably got a joke. Some other bullshit. Well, all right, all right. Dr. Dre winning the award named after Dr. Dre. That's some nigga shit there. And get this. Get this. The award is black instead of gold. It's a Grammy. It's the same type. It's still shaped like a Grammy, but it's black. All black. 
<laughs> so basically, this is the Grammy. This is the well, black I'm one. black, y'all. Well, I'm black, y'all, and I'm black at that black, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black at that black, and I'm black, y'all. Who is the black guy that impacted the world the most? All of us. So, because uh, of beats by Dre, <laughs> Jesus. Beats by Dre, Dre's beats, and all the people we actually put on. I guess this <laughs> is yeah, and the, and the simple fact that like really, I don't like the fact that he won an award. His, name his artists him. under Dr. The Dre it are like internationally known. Like Snoop is known everywhere. And Eminem is pretty much known everywhere. So. Yeah, I guess that's part of it too. Pretty much. I, I get it. I get it. I, all right. Well, um, since I'm going into music and I want to laugh very right quick, have you all seen Smokey Robinson's new album? And they track. I haven't seen shit about Smokey Robinson except for he was on Vlad TV recently. Is that why he's yeah. on Vlad TV? Is he promoting something? Usually, when people make appearances, they're about to put out some type of project, especially if okay, it's everybody. music related. So that's usually the rollout, one of the rollouts. I don't know why he picked Vlad, but yeah, it was plenty of other people he could have picked. But uh, yeah, the track list yeah. is hilarious. So. The album is called Gasms, short for Orgasms. Okay, yeah, I was gonna go there. All right, I'm just making sure I'm about to be for no reason. All no, right, no, you in the right, you in the right mind frame. Um, track one is gasms. Uh, track two is how you make me feel. That sounds like a normal traditional R&B track. Normal smoky track. Yep. Track three is I want to know your body. Okay, he's getting the the pause okay. look frisky and whatnot. He's getting nasty. He's starting All to right. get nasty. Let me see what's going on under that dress. Oh. Uh, this was it gets kind of scary. Zero uh number four is um I keep calling you. Why the fuck you ain't picking up? <laughs> they ain't yeah. they ain't part of the track, was under the track, track. Track. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then it gets a little scary. Track five is roll around. I don't know if he's rolling around a girl, crib or anything. Uh um, so is he rolling up like he rolling around in the in the in a car, or is he rolling around like he rolling around like in the sheets? It might be the latter one. Okay. Just, okay. So he done got back called to the, you go to roll around. Uh, this he is where my finally picked up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Six is called Besides. B-E-S-I-D-E-S. Just in case my, my, my dialect fucks up how it sounds. But Besides. Like, I don't know. Besides okay. this. Besides like, that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Seven right. is if, if we don't have each other. And um, mm-hmm. the last two are the funniest titles out of it. And I have to say pause before I say track eight. Oh, God. <laughs> track eight oh, is called God. You You Fill Me Up. Pause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this one from the male or the female point of view? <laughs> <laughs> Um, from point of view, I hope he means spiritually. Yeah. 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 Is this a pegging situation? And I, I hope if it's in the female okay. point of view, last he's last singing track. the Maybe chorus. He Maybe he redeemed himself. Okay, what's the last uh, track? I don't think he's going to redeem himself at all on the last track. Track number nine. Nine is the highest level of change. So, yes, go ahead, put that in. So after you got Amos. filled, you had the highest level of change. No, no, number nine. I was just saying nine in general is the highest level of change, but nine, okay, come on, come right on. nine. <laughs> My phone don't want me to say it because it just closed up. All right, track nine, it. I fit in there. <laughs> so track eight is you fill me up. It track nine um, is I fit in there. You just got filled up, and then you surprised that you fit in there. What's going on in his? 
Gasms is out April 28th. <laughs> no more cruising on a Sunday afternoon. Now we're well, just that off, you did. <laughs> getting nasty. Oh, is that a Done with this nigga. Um, all right. Let's go ahead to the next good and fuckery because that's a uh, disturbing. That sounds like either a stalker track list or like the nastiest, like some nasty shit that a uh, face would brought up would have brought to us on the you didn't ask us, but like oh, it's a community out here, y'all, that's doing this weird thing. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Smoking Robinson, y'all, like like what the fuck is happening? What? All right. All right. So, uh, well, since we are singers and everything, um, no, we ain't uh, on nobody. We ain't on um, nobody. We are individualized and in our own faces. Is about singers and R and B singers, legendary okay. R singers. Uh, okay, one of our Virginia legends uh, did some fuckery, but it was out of a. I, I would say. Out of emotion, because he was a nominee uh, for best R and B, uh-huh. and the um, artist Robert Glasper actually won. And Who that? he was who's Robert Glasper? Well, um, um, he's pretty much a composer, singer, black man, or whatever. Uh, I haven't he's a black for... man. Mm-hmm. What is he? Okay, where he come from? I don't even know. It just I think he's I would say he's probably one of these um writers that's always been in the industry or whatever, and he decided to come out with an album one day. My thing is, where is the song at? Like, cause I haven't heard this song. Where is yeah. this song? Where, where is this? But at? you know what? Nowadays, actual where would I know him? is kind of hard to find unless you Chris Brown, but Chris Brown was like, who the fuck is Robert Gra- uh, Glasper? Um, That's what it should have been. Because I don't know who the fuck he is. But afterwards, after he, uh, a couple of people hit him up, he did his homework and everything. He actually apologized to Robert Glasper. Oh, is, so, is, he, is he that nigga or something? Uh, be- evidently. <laughs> evidently. If you go and listen, I'm going to actually, when I get some time to myself, I'm going to listen to his music himself, but it's been like a lot of people that's like, um, you know what, now that I'm listening to it, yeah, I can see why he's like. Pause. 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 But in, in general, I feel like... Let me see. Before you listen... Saying, let me get let me get there. Pause. Let me let me get let me get to the crib. I want I want to I want to uh, review this shit for the pod. Like I want to record us listening to this bullshit, and uh, you know I can mute out the, the the songs and shit or whatever. But I mean, I'm not the best person as far as when it comes to R and B. I'm I'm really really. That's what makes like, you familiar because I'm good. Old school. Um, that old nigga on some nasty shit. Yeah, face. You down with it? Am I down with it? No, like not. God. <laughs> the pause game never ends. I mean, are you the pause game never pause? Recording a reaction video to this Robert Glasper's music. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. I I'm sorry. I this should just make. What's the next up? What's the next? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh so. Lastly, we ended it off with Grammys. Uh, pretty much, this nigga in this damn whistle. <laughs> Quavo and Offset allegedly fight. Over doing the takeoff tribute, doing the what? Grammy. Can somebody enlighten me? And maybe Pat, maybe, maybe you plugged in enough Pat to uh, put me on game. What exactly led to the initial issue between Offset 
and the other two Migos. Like, why is it that Quavo is so beefing with all? Like, why is it that everybody got this thing against Offset? What did he do? Offset, Offset basically wanted changes to probably his actual contract or whatever, which okay. led to him wanting to be released from the label. Uh, and and Quavo and and uh, Takeoff was like pretty much is like we still got to do stuff, and I guess they wasn't down with it, so they ended up being a group together. And that album came out last year, um, Uncle Few. Okay, we, so it was over some amazing that we find out that so, Takeoff is actually Quavo's nephew. So yeah, this basically like some um, Ice Cube NWA shit. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to need motherfuckers out there in hip-hop land to do your fucking history. This ain't no new shit, people. Yeah. But what we don't, but what we ain't privy to the past and we we ain't cognitively knowledgeable about what happened before now with our predecessors in the same, in the same genre. We tend to think this shit is some new shit. No, same type of shit happened on Ice Cube. He wanted his own shit, stepped out because them paper won't write and everybody in the group turned against his ass. So he ate the ass alive and what was no Vaseline. Uh-huh. Pause. That's accurate. That's accurate. <clears throat> <laughs> That's accurate. That's pretty fucking accurate. Yeah, and it happens all the time in rap. Shit happens yeah. in Slaughterhouse. I think at the end of the day, the biggest issue is when you go into a situation in business, like have everybody just continuously be honest. I think the problem probably stems from one nigga wanting something, but not saying nothing to them other niggas until it got to the a bad point. Like if you want to go solo offset, or if you got a problem with the label, like talk to them niggas when it first start itching it. Like if you look at like groups, even like the little short lived little groups like Day Twenty Six and shit from the uh the band shows and shit, a lot of times it came f- like their demise came from one person or two people having an issue with the label, but not saying that when they first had the issue, they wait till the shit get fucked up for them and then they say some wild shit, and now it become like a us against them thing when it could have been like y'all against the label, which is a mm-hmm. lot more popular to come from. <laughs> But you know what I mean, like, like I look at it like so. Say us as a podcast, right? Say we uh we blow up, we hit a million subscribers or some shit, and we doing great. But then a brand come out of nowhere and is like, "Hey, I really want to work with Face because his marijuana knowledge is like superb." Right? Well, do we? block that are we mad because he wants to do that or does he just tell us up front hey look these people want to do that you know what i'm saying like i think a lot of times these folks they be having fucked up communication like just talk to each other Uh especially them three because them three is all family like nigga y'all got to be at the barbecue together thanksgiving y'all go see each other like this ain't no normal this ain't no normal like we just we just met up and we got put together by the label like no nah, nigga we came in this shit through some family shit like we all are cousins and uncles and brother like what the fuck is we man we don't talk why nigga so scared to talk uh-huh. and just say hey that's what I'm going through like I, I think that's the strength that has made our the people that's the, the what is it one two three six people that's in our group chat our group meet you know what I'm saying like I feel like that's what make it something that has lasted this long is because everybody just always communicate like hey I'm over here we're doing this now hey uh, I feel like this now uh, I'm working on this now I need time to do this All right, give me space for that you know what I'm saying so it's like it give everybody time to like kind of just like be themselves ain't nobody trying to do nothing for nobody else or trying to like <clears throat> Well, I really want to do this, but I ain't saying nothing. So let me hold this resentment. No, just go do that if you say it. So yeah. all said this, make shit some more easy shit. Let me go behind you. 
See, that's that'd be the fuck. That'd be the fuckery. I don't know. Like, I can't really say, like, we not there to say that he probably discussed this with them and they just wasn't for it. Or My thing and I think it, I, why they actually mad? recorded an album without him even knowing. And I think that was really triggered it pretty much. And uh, also, at the end of the day, we got to remember what we always say. That man probably knew it was best for him and chose to make a decision on his own merit what was best for him. Regardless, because sometimes even in family, family don't always have the best interest for each individual. It's always best for, for the whole family. So it could be that at that point, he was like, you know what? I've been doing for the whole family this time. What about me? I got to look out for me. And stuff right. may have been my right. He could have went to the family talking with a plan about for him and the family didn't support him. So he had to support himself. Could have been that. And you know what? That's the sad part. Because like. I look at what I look at the family, and I, and I I I hate to bring it up because right now he's kind of in some fuckery his damn self, uh, J Prince. But like when he say like your kin is your blood, but like who's loyal to you make them family, make them family. Uh-huh. Like, and you look at like a situation where a nigga want to do something that's gonna make his situation better. Why would you be mad at him about? It? Why would you go against that in any way? Like what about what does that say about you and your ability to suffice on your own that you are that fucked up that this nigga about to do some shit that's gonna make his shit great and you sitting there like well fuck you it, it, it ain't what it ain't align with what I want to do nigga fuck you do your own shit you grown you was a grown ass man I wish I wish one of my bros any one of them would come to me and be like, hey, that's what I'm doing now. And I would be like, hey, well, that don't feel what I want to do. Fuck you. Nigga, what? And them niggas is real blood. Like, the people that I call my family, most of them, I would say 60% of them to this day are, are not people that I'm actually related to on a blood level. It's more people that's like, has over the years, like, we've been through shit and have been able to show each other that, yo, we're going to be there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, when you don't want to do the shit that I want to do, great. Go do the shit, your own shit. Like, I remember 10 times back in the day growing up young, like, you no know, 19, 18, whatever, 17, and niggas be sitting around and be like, Three niggas, all three of them want to do something completely different. Everybody be like, all right, I'll see you in a minute. Nobody was mad because you didn't want to go with me. What kind of let's go to the bathroom together girl shit is that? Niggas is kind of sassy nowadays. <laughs> Yo, the vecchy ass shit, ain't it? Like, let's go. Hey, stick with me. Come on, y'all. We came together. Niggas we need to go. Okay, with me, we good. Nigga. You owe your you old following ass can't stand on your own to make a decision. Can't be the master of your own domain, ass niggas. Yo, I hate that shit. That really bothers me. That oh, we've gotten to that point that like niggas can't just be like, all right, go do your thing. A product. You that dependent on this? Nigga? Like you mad at him for not wanting to do what you wanted to do? What kind of bitch, frail, like bitch made frail nigga shit? Bitch. In the words of Craig, in the words of Craig Smith, like bitch made frail nigga shit. Like the, what? What are you on? Who raised you? That don't come from no man. Every man I know would stand like, hey man, please do what you're supposed to do. That's kind of what you're raised to do as a man is to do what you, what is best. For you so that you can take care of everything. Oh, you got a family, you got a wife and kids. Oh, go, by all means, go do what you need to do. Oh, you need more money? Hey man, how we how we get this nigga more money? Hey, man, we need to stand together. Well, let's stand together. Let's go in the then. Fuck it. We all got a big name. We all the name. We the amigos. We can all drop an independent project right now and get some bread. But no. Let me be greedy. They did. Yeah, said, I think that's it. I think it's struggle to be communication. 
to make it through business. <clears throat> no, that's it. So the key to everything is communicate. Like you can have anything be whatever, and it never has to go sour if it's communication involved. Like anything, you can be working on a goddamn little five minute project together, and damn it, them five minutes can be peaceful as hell as long as y'all talking through it. Hey, pass uh -huh. me that. Oh, you need this piece? Here you go. Oh, well, that's why we put this together. You don't think that'll work? Oh, I don't think that'll work. Okay, I understand. That. Let's see if we do it this way. Like, just keep talking. Communication will, will solve everything. Because then nobody feels like they blindsided or they betrayed or they got hit with a, oh, I didn't know that was coming. Nope. Saw that coming. We done talk through it. We good. Communication and, and lack of jealousy. Can't be jealous. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep going if you let me. That's just some fuck shit. Can we all just get along? <clears throat> no. Oh, no. That was a. Uh... Rodney King. Reginald Denny yeah. was the other that got beat up in the riots, but it won't work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, a lot of people got, got their ass with doing the riots, didn't they? The fact that to this day it's just names just pop. Oh, goddamn. Just getting their ass with one. Riots with something else. Mm -hmm. That's not <clears throat> Are we done with good and fuckery? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely just... good with the good and fuckery. Oh, okay. These dead silences, you know. Somebody got to say something. Uh, otherwise, I don't know. I... Shit. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot it was my segment for a moment. I've been smoking too much. I'm sorry. But yeah, this is the end of the good and fuckery. Episode 116. And shit, that's how I'm making up for the bullshit that I did earlier. And I, but hey, I did some awesome segues, and um, yeah, that's the end of the show. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, welcome to the we end of the fly show. High. Well, uh, uh, okay. One of the first things I want to do is shout out uh, our black business of the week. Uh, first of all, go to be beautifully true, be beautifully true. dot com. Um, their boutique is blowing up. They got a new location. Um, and their black business of the week, SIBO. SIBO Apparel. Um, it is it stands for consistently elevating beyond obstacles. So uh, go out there and get your SIBO. It's it's by a DMV native, uh, brother SIBO. So please go get your uh Go get your 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 Cibo apparel. You'll actually see me with some of that on this weekend, so I'll be uh, able to show that off uh, to the pod squad. Um, and uh, if you just go pull up in the Be Beautifully True boutique, um, you can definitely get your Cibo apparel today. But please make sure you get your Cibo apparel from Be Beautifully True boutique in Douglasville, Georgia, on Strickland Ave. Right on. Right yeah, that well. Um, that's pretty much it. Well, all right, then. Well, all right. As always, man, we at the end of this motherfucker. It's been episode 116, and uh, it's been an awkward ending, but it's been our end. Y'all been here with us. Y'all know how we do things. It's been the partners. And uh, Sorry. as always, man. As we sign off, I've been one third of the partners. Oh it's yeah, well, we got we've got and one I've thing. Been with. Uh it's the Padawan here. Uh you know, just we, we, we forgot about um the whole, you know, our trade and all that other stuff and whatnot. Our trade clothing, damn it. Our trade clothing dot com. Our trade clothing dot com. A R T R E clothing.com. And no, we never spell clothing for y'all. Check it out. You see it on his back. You see the partner's clothing on his on his front and his back. 
Get the art trade clothing. Get the partner's apparel. Come on, man. Visit the store. It's just a click away. A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Come on now. Yeah, motherfucker. <clears throat> and if you want to talk to us, at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S, that's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's the Twitter. That is the Instagram. That is the TikTok. That's the Twitch. I have to think about it every single time. It don't make no damn sense. And Facebook is Tiz Faith Pat, all the partners. And they're down there on below. Also, visit the YouTube. Oh, that's it. And if you want to give us money, if you just so happen to see that you want to do some money, man, just look at the bottom of the screen right now. It's scrolling past you. Look at one of them things and throw your boys some change. And yeah, man, as always, man, I've been one third of the partners, boy. Your boy Tiz. And I've been along with. The other third of the partners, the Padawan here. And I'm along with. Try to pause. I forgot that. I Face, it. damn it. Finish the race. Same damn place. Come check us out next week. I'll let me. Yeah, man, them partners, we're going to be back next week, man. And guess what? Y'all gonna get a little weekend action, man. Y'all gonna see some of the uh, some of the crew that led to the partners, man. Y'all gonna see some of the buddies together. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Hopefully, we can make that happen. And uh, if nothing else, you gonna definitely see me and Pat again out here in these streets. And uh, we about this thing. Peace, motherfuckers. We love y'all. Have a good one. This is the end of the show. Subscribe. Pick one of the videos too. We need that time. We need that time. I'm just fucking up the end of the shit.